video from Fast Tech. In this one, I'm gonna be disassembling a PS5 DualSense controller. I'm gonna be taking this controller apart down to the motherboard, down to the frame, down to the buttons. We're gonna be taking everything out of this controller and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to fix some of the issues on the controllers and what I think is gonna break on these controllers, including the analog sticks, which by looking at some of the other videos other creators have done, are the same analog sticks that were used in PS4 DualShock 4 controllers and they are known to be problematic and cause all kinds of issues including stick drift. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to disassemble this controller and we're going to be using our FastTech Pro Toolkit and our FastTech Pro Auto Kit which you can use to disassemble your PS5 DualSense controller, not just your PS5 DualSense controller, also your PS5 console, your PS4 console, your PS3, your Xbox, you name it. Links are gonna be in the description box for the toolkit and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Let's get started. This video applies to you if you have a PS5 DualSense controller with a model number CFIZC T1W and this is the first gen PS5 controller that came with the PS5 that we bought. To disassemble for this channel, the first thing we're going to need to remove to disassemble the PS5 controller is this black piece of plastic trim here and we can use the pry tool out of our FastTech Pro Toolkit and we're going to look at the bottom of the controller and we're gonna stick our pry tool in here and just lift up this trim on both sides. Like that. Like that. On the other side. I'm just gonna use my finger for these ones because it's a lot easier. And once you have that out, just gonna lift up this piece and then pull it outwards. And that's the plastic trim that's gonna come off. Now we're gonna look at the back of the controller. There's gonna be two Phillips screws that we're gonna have to remove. For this part, I'm gonna use the FastTech Pro Auto Kit to make things a little bit faster, which is not part of the FastTech Pro Toolkit. This is an automatic screwdriver that's sold separately, but it comes with all the bits, just like the FastTech Pro Toolkit does. It does not come with the pry tool at this time, so if you need the pry tool, you will have to get the regular version. We're gonna remove these two Phillips screws. At this point, we're gonna remove the L1 and R1 buttons. You can simply stick your pry tool in here and lift them up like that and they'll come out. Don't worry, they're not gonna break. Stick it in there and lift up like that. Now, the L1, R1 buttons are removed and that's how you replace the L1, R1 buttons if you need to replace them. Actually, you didn't even have to remove any of this other stuff. You could have just popped them out with the controller completely closed. Once we've removed the L1 and R1 buttons, there's gonna be two Phillips screws hiding underneath. We're gonna remove these. Now that we got the Phillips screws removed, we're gonna look at the underside of the controller. There's gonna be two clips by the headphone jack. We're gonna lift up these clips, one at a time, but be careful not to break these. And once the clips are disengaged, we're gonna lift the back and it's gonna come right off. And now we have access to the battery, something that you guys are gonna be replacing the most, people that are watching this video. This is gonna be the component that feels the most naturally because all lithium ion batteries have a set life and this one's no different. So one day, maybe one year, maybe two years, maybe three years from now, depending on how much you play, this battery will die one day. And to replace it, you're gonna have to remove everything that we removed. And, and then we're gonna simply lift out this battery 
and then there's a connector on the side here we're just gonna pull it out like that let's take a closer look at the battery this is a model LIP1708 and we do sell these on our website links are gonna be in the description box if your battery runs out we do sell these and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount again link in the top comment and the description box so put the battery back you just reconnect put it back in and reassemble the controller but we're going to be disassembling this thing further so let's continue i see a lot of similarities in the design with the ps4 controller the battery is much bigger and it looks like it's got a higher capacity than the old dualshock 4 controller and it's larger in size noticeably so you're going to get more hours out of this thing i suspect it's because batteries are getting cheaper. They're able to pack this battery in and not charging you any more than they did for the DualShock 4 controller. I do believe the price has gone up a few more bucks for these, but that's most likely because of inflation and the dollar and all currencies around the world are losing value. That's why we also have to keep increasing our prices to keep up with that in case some of you guys are wondering. At this point, we're gonna remove this screw So we're trying to get to the logic board and we have to remove that screw to get to it. Now I see that the triggers, because they're adaptive, they have their own module and they're connected to the motherboard. Unlike last time where they just had buttons that were connected directly to the motherboard. But as you can see, there's a cable that connects the triggers this time around and the triggers themselves are not installed directly on the motherboard. They're modular. So if these triggers do break, they're gonna be a lot easier to, to replace than if they were built onto the motherboard. So the good news is the triggers don't require any soldering. I'm just gonna pull out the mic like that. It, it came out and it's very thin. It's got a very thin ribbon cable, so I don't wanna damage it. I'm gonna grab it slowly pull it out and that's the mic the built-in mic in your controller and that's how you replace that thing in case you're wondering we do sell this on our website as well links are gonna be in the description box if you spill liquid into this thing it's probably gonna stop working and if it does fail links are in the description box Now we're gonna pull off this little holster for the battery. It also holds this plastic piece right here, which is the reset button for this controller. A lot of people don't know, but there's a hole in the back of your controller right here. And if you're having any settings related issues, you can poke like a small pin, one of those SIM opening pins that you get with an iPhone you can poke them in there or even a toothpick and reset the controller it pushes down on this little plastic piece right here which pushes that button and that would reset the controller in all its settings just hold it down for 10 seconds I believe and the controller would be reset but right now there's no battery connected to it so there's not going to be a response we're gonna remove that piece. Now we're gonna get this board out and we're gonna remove the triggers by lifting up the ribbon cable connector. And now there's another connector at the bottom we're gonna remove like that. Now there's some clips on the side here. We're gonna use this tool that's included in our Fast Tech Pro toolkit. And now we can get the board out and if you wanna get the board out completely, there's four wires that have to be desoldered using a soldering iron. So we're just gonna push this out here and the board's out at this point. If you wanna completely remove it, you'd have to remove those wires. I'm gonna remove the analog sticks like that. 
These look very similar to the PS4 analog sticks. And the analog stick itself looks like it's the same from the PS4 DualShock 4 controllers. Which is disappointing because these are known to fail and cause analog drift. And it's kind of disappointing to see the same design in here. Because these will fail and if you guys will be needing to replace these at some point. And to do that you'd have to desolder these here using a hot air station and replacing them that way. At this point, I'm gonna desolder these wires to show you guys how it's done. You're gonna need a soldering iron for this. And get these, get these wires out of the way. Boom. All right, now we can get the board out of the way and get a closer look at the logic board. It's a model BDM010. And we also sell this on a website. Links are gonna be in the description box. And now it's time to reveal the surprise upgrade. I'm gonna be putting in Xbox One Elite style analog sticks into my PS5 controller. I always like the fact that you can use different size analog sticks with this thing, which I can't do with my PS5 controller. But now we're gonna be replacing the analog sticks with Xbox One Elite style analog sticks. So I'm gonna be installing the base that's included in a kit that we sell on our website at fasttechstore.com as always. You can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. The link for this is gonna be in the description box and the top comment. So we're gonna install the base of our analog stick, which is gonna go in like this. Yeah, same thing on the other side. like that and now you want to push it in all the way down to make sure that it's all the way down otherwise we're gonna have problems now I'm gonna install it into the controller just to see if everything fits and sits right and we're gonna get the cables out of the way and now we're gonna try to see if this thing actually fits. And I'm gonna be disassembling the controller further, so I'm not putting the cables back in, I'm not worried about that. I just wanna see if everything fits and sits right. But at the same time, you don't want any of the cables getting in the way and getting damaged. And it looks like they do fit, and they fit perfectly. So now, I have the ability to have custom analog sticks on my PS5 controller once this thing is put back together. Isn't that awesome, guys? That's the surprise upgrade. And now we have the ultimate PS5 controller. All right, so now that I made sure that my mod works perfectly, and my genius is intact and proven and tested once more. I'm gonna take the logic board out and we're gonna continue our PS5 controller disassembly. Now we're gonna remove these Phillips screws to get to the buttons and the touchpad at the front. Now we're gonna be able to pull out the mid frame 
long with the triggers. It's amazing how much more complicated the trigger system is obviously because it's not just a regular trigger system anymore so here we got the up down direction and the square circle triangle buttons the ps button right here in the front panel here we got the touch pad the two buttons at the front the home and the share button We'll just drop those out like that. And we got the membranes. And now we can drop these buttons. They'll just fall out. Same with the up down direction button. The PS button in the middle got its own little membrane and then it will come out as one piece so to get the touchpad out you just push it and it comes out like that that's the touchpad that you're probably only ever going to use in Astro's Playroom which is the demo game that comes with the PlayStation 5 but no games with the PS4 that I remember ever utilized this pad and if it was it was very annoying so I actually you know since this is my controller maybe I, I just won't put this back in I probably won't even notice the difference to be honest there are these screws at the front that we're gonna take out to take out the triggers at the back Now that we have those screws out, we got the L2 trigger completely separated from the controller, and that's how you replace the L2. I really wish Microsoft went with haptic triggers on at least their Elite controllers or maybe even the regular controller that you get with a Series X, because that's really a feature that I like about the PS5. And overall, I prefer the Xbox Series X over the PS5 but I really wish that it had this feature. Let's remove the R2 trigger. There's again two screws that hold it in. And then now the R2 is also out. The circuitry for the buttons can, can also be removed if you lift this piece up here and then pull it through. And that concludes our PS5 disassembly video. Thanks for watching another video from Fast Tech. Please smash the like button if this video helped you out. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit the bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications so you don't miss another Fast Tech video. Also, check out my vlog channel in which I travel the world and I record my adventures. I promise you won't be disappointed Link for that is in the description box. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'll put a link for that in the description box as well. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out, and I'll see you in the next one.